Well, the good, the good news is that the Express and Echo have put in print what was only online last week. Yeah. I seen that well. So my video about the bus stop in Hevertree is famous. Uh, and, the, and the very good news, you should be standing outside the Phoenix to sign autographs. <laughs> well, <Thank> possibly. <laughs> possibly. In the rain. In the rain. Is it raining? It's slightly raining, but no. it's not going to last for long. No, it'll go away, no, won't it? It'll go believe, away. Don't believe them. It'll go away. It's going to snow. Mm. <laughs> yeah. So no, it was it was a very good article. It's been updated. The yeah. the the notice from the actual disgruntled of Hevertree is included. Every word of the extra notice that appeared on the bus stop. Okay. And there's a statement from Stagecoach that they they mean well. They've they've got this plan of doing notices which show all the time timetabling, and they respond to feedback. They say. They haven't explained what they're going to do with the posters to change them, but maybe that will happen. Put them over down. Well, that would be the answer, wouldn't it? Or if they've only... You see, I think if they've only got one route per poster, they could have a different design. Software can cope with that. Would you think? Yeah. I would have thought so. Um... But I, I raved on about this in the in the drama show, so I'm going to try and work work these things into a play or into fiction, or maybe we're going off into fiction, because we started talking about uh, voice interfaces. Is that fantasy or is that quite realistic? Um. Yes, I think so. I'm waiting for the gap. <laughs> to, to launch off but Chris was about to speak so I was oh. being courteous oh. well, yeah. <laughs> well Chris well, do, how realistic is, a, is a, a speaking bus stop that we can talk to and it will talk back and it will understand what our question is it knows everything you mean you want an AI bus stop well yes why not I think so, yes. Yeah, I don't think that will work well. Why not? Um, well, um, I don't think Stagecoach have got the money to invest. Well, it would it would be a wonderful thing, though, wouldn't it? It, it would. Be, it would. I, I've got the answer to it. You, go, uh, you send Chris, OK, to a bus stop with a megaphone. With a megaphone. With a megaphone. And he, he can shout out the times and which platform it is and uh, do you have to hook onto the back of the bus or whatever. JD, <laughs> it's a bus stop. That's OK. So um, but it don't have... Pla- don't stop at platforms. Well, they should do. If it's a bus stop, you must be stopping the bus. Well, which, yeah. which, um, chan- which station it's going to stop at? They have they have co- what a train station or well, <laughs> bus no, they have station. they have yeah the bus station has well what do you call those like stations or stands stands yes yeah, stands. stands they have stands one yeah. to ten or something don't yeah. they yeah bus shelters they used to call them when I was young yes they mm. yeah you shelter well, for the bus um there's there's Exeter City Council and Devon County Council they're all involved in it yeah. And there must be other people who've got got the AI to cope with it. Um, and maybe the, um, there'd be other people who'd, who'd be interested. It can't be that complicated. Maybe JD would. Um, but that's not a bad idea. No, Chris, weren't you in prep with the talking bus? Stop? Well, I was, Chris. I'm going to play. I'm going to play a recording because oh. we went. We went there. You and I with with John, but yeah. I only had my Doro phone and it didn't get a very good sound. And you and John were talking over the bus stop as well, so I went back and recorded it just the bus stop. Okay. So shall I play that? I'm going to put all the all the microphones down so you can hear it. Okay. And then I'm going to play it. This is stand one. The time is fifteen oh five. Service 7, destination at 
15.45. Service 7. Destination at 16.45. So, Will. Yes. Did you catch the number seven bus? No, I didn't, Chris. But and where did it go? <laughs> it was going to Top Ness, but it didn't know that, did it? It didn't seem to know. It, it had a gap it, where yeah. the destination should be. But you said you were interested in those because some of those buses stop at Countless Rear on the way out. Is that they right? They do. So that's very secret knowledge that not many people realise. No, I think everyone realises it, that buses have to stop en route. Yes, but they're sort of Exeter buses, because most of the bus station ones are going far and wide. Yeah, but you just have to pick, because not all of them drop you at Counters Way. They won't stop so at Countless Square if, even if they're going past it. Well, no. So, uh, the 85 goes somewhere else. It's only certain buses that go past Countless Square. Oh. So, and I knew the bus because... The bus I got was the bus I catch to Plymouth. Oh, right. So that's how you come to know these things. Yeah. But I sort of known it for ages. Well, um, didn't need to use it at college, at school and college. Um, and I didn't really need to use it when I was living in the city centre. It's only when I've been living at Countess Weir and since the city centre buses got a bit bad that I had to use that method. Right. Well, Chris, on the drama show, I was asking myself to question why I was talking about the reality of the buses on a drama show. Yeah. And I concluded that really drama and reality are often muddled up. Yeah. So if it is going to be a while before we can persuade stagecoach to invest in an AI system and put speakers and microphones on every bus stop. Yeah, which I'd say is fairly true. Um, would you be interested in being the voice of the bus stop <laughs> in a play? So you'd need to provide a, um, a phone and... <laughs> I've got two of them. You've got two of them. And um, we'll, we'll sort of improvise it to start with until we work out a proper script. So people come up to you with complex problems, such as if there's no bu sort of city bus coming along that's going towards Pinho, let's say. You know about Countess Weir, but you may have to find out about other places. Is there a, a, a sort of trunk route going, I don't know, to Honiton or somewhere that so, stops in Pinho? So is this your new play? This will be a new play, Chris. So you're not so worried about Jim anymore? Well, we could do worried about Jim as well, cos Jim may be stuck somewhere, <laughs> unable to find a bus stop. OK, um... What did John think of all your play ideas? Oh, he's never very keen on my play ideas, but that's all right. That's part of a play anyway, which he doesn't realise. <laughs> my, my basic play, Chris, is I start the show saying uh, it's a wonderful show. We've got lots of guests coming and better still, I've written a play. And then John arrives a little bit late and says, your plays are rubbish. <laughs> and we haven't got any guests. They'll never agree to be in your play. <laughs> and um, the, our producer's going to tell us we ought to be doing more common wise in a moment or two. Yes, but the producer has now said we don't need anybody in the studio. We can put it all automatic and go and have our coffee. 
Well, that's all right. That's what we're working towards. Yes, what we're working towards. We haven't quite got it yet. No, no, we, <laughs> we haven't got, got there got yet. Finalise well, the. No, but thing. stage stagecoach or Devon County Council or Exeter City Council, they will invest in this AI system one day. But Chris, are you are you, are you happy with this idea? Because we'll do it in on location. We'll try and find a, a bench somewhere near a bus stop, <laughs> a place to sit down. I think it should be on the bus. We should be on the oh, bus. Yes, on the bus, and we stick him in the corner, and he can he can do all the the uh, the voiceovers there. Get low. So how does that help someone that's at the bus stop? Yeah, I think it's you have a you have a thing called a, a loudspeaker on the outside, and it shouts <gasps> very loudly. Bus is uh, coming, and. <laughs> Uh, Chris is on the bus. <laughs> uh, that, uh, yeah, well, I think your idea better. Of, of being at a bus stop? Yeah. And so people can ask you questions, and within a few minutes, thanks to your phone, yeah. you'll be able to tell them an answer. Yeah. I think that's, that's pretty good. OK. Um... You, you won't be in any personal danger, Chris, but I have to tell you that John's remark, when I explained all this to him yesterday, was that um, the bus stops might be vandalised if people realised there was a, a mobile phone hidden inside them. But I, I don't think that would happen, because it would all be components, wouldn't it? There wouldn't be... All, all the AI. So, so I might get vandalized. Will you're so you want me to get? I Chris, see. I, will be, I, I see where to go. <laughs> will want me to get vandalized no, so no. he can take over <laughs> this show. No, Chris. So no. So he can have a bit more of fun. <laughs> no, Chris. I've got quite enough to do. Thank you very much. No, in the in the play, it's only a play. I think I just think the play's got to re re reflect all the issues which different people have raised in reality. So John, having raised this topic, I don't think it's it's realistic because um, if you look at the at the bus stand in the bus station, the speaker's just in the top of it, isn't it? It's not it's not easily accessed. You'd have to take the whole thing apart yeah. to get the speakers out, and the microphone would just be like a. a please open the door in the wall sort of thing so and the, all the processing all the chips and everything would be at a distance so I, I, I don't think people are going to take it apart but anyway Chris don't worry uh, you're, the, the play will be done with, with lots of protection for you in broad daylight Thank in very you. safe places Thank well, you We'll try and find. We could find a bus stop somewhere in the middle of the city where there's lots of nice people about. We think. Okay. Though if John would nick him over. No, he didn't say that. He just said he thought that's the sort of thing that might happen. Okay. I reckon John should volunteer for this job. Okay. Well, we'll try. We'll. Uh, what we'll do? We'll. We'll. Um. We'll test out several people. We'll do what do they call them? Rehearsals? No, auditions. We'll. We'll audition you both. Well, we, we might audition JD, but he's much more likely to be the producer. Yeah. He'll be somewhere in the background. I'll stand on the pavement giving orders. How about that? That sounds very good. OK. Yes. So uh, that's my role, I think. And and just warn Chris if there's any danger. Uh, no, don't do that. No, you're not going to bother with that. <laughs> no, don't bother with that. <laughs> no, all right. <laughs> OK. Well, I'll, I'll tell him when the coffee's coming. Right. Oh, yes, that's <laughs> that's pretty pretty important. Well, if there's anybody listening who's got ideas for this um, this play... Featuring Chris Norton as the voice of the bus stop. Yes, I think I think it should be on a bus. Well, we could do it on a I'll bus as well. We could yeah, move on I'll to I'll a bus. Yeah. Move to another bus stop. Yes. And do do another version. Uh, anyway, 
Uh, this should be just stone. 